Welcome to Chile Law Review. My name is Ben Burnett. My guest today is Dre Tenille. Dre, how are you? I'm good. How about you? Doing great, thanks. Talk to me about growing up in your education. I grew up in the mountains of Western North Carolina. My education, I went to boarding school outside of Washington, D.C. and in New Hampshire. Then I went to college at College of Charleston in South Carolina. And I stayed by the water for another three years at University of Miami School of Law. Did you like College of Charleston or Miami better? Definitely College of Charleston. I didn't have to study much there. (laughs) (laughs) Something about law school actually made you work? It might have been the other students being so hardcore, or maybe I just realized that I was paying a lot more for school then. When When you look at that experience, talk about the Miami School of Law and how you chose it and what that meant to you. I ended up picking Miami because I wanted to go into tax law. I thought that taxes are inevitable and they'd be make for good job security. But I got down there and I started realizing that I'm not all that interested in drafting transactional documents. And I really started gravitating towards litigation because I like being in the courtroom and I grew up playing sports. I was a competitive ski racer. So I, I like the pressure. I've never heard anybody say that they're a competitive ski racer. So did you grow up, when you say you grew up in Western North Carolina, is that like Boone or or Asheville or Cullowee? I grew up in Linville, North Carolina, which is 17 miles from Boone, and it's very close to Sugar Mountain. So we would go skiing after school and sometimes even before school. When you were evaluating that, what would you tell young people going to law school with with the trends and the things that you see in the marketplace today? I tell them to go if you really like research and writing, because that's almost all that I do. I mean, we're trial lawyers, but we're really only in court maybe 10% of the time of our practice. The rest of the time is writing briefs, preparing cases for trial, or going out and talking to witnesses. When you talk about litigation, are there things that in your career that you like focusing on more than others? I like big cases with damages, and that motivates me, and it makes me really want to stand up for the plaintiff. One of the things that really impresses me about Chile Law Group is that you guys are super selective with what you will choose to take from what walks in the door. I would imagine it's five or 10% of the cases that ever contact you at all. But when you were in that evaluation process, who are the types of people that you like to work with? It's like separate the case. What makes, what are the clients that really closely identify and select you guys? Is there a common theme? My favorite cases are cases in which the client is completely innocent and the other party is very clearly at fault. I'm, growing up, I was... Well, I come from a conservative family, so I didn't want to be pushing cases that weren't obviously meritorious from the outset. That, I think that's a huge misconception. You see it on TV all the time. That's not who you guys are. No. When you look, but that's a perception that you have to fight. If you, if you were talking to somebody on the street and they asked you about litigation, or plaintiff's lawyers, I think that there is a connotation there just by the sheer marketing of it out there, people are like, "Uh, but if that's me and something nefarious happens to me and I need help, I don't care what commercials I see on TV. I would like something that was wrong to be right. And plenty of the things that you guys take here, they transpire from somebody's worst day. Yes. When you evaluate that, how are you, I know you guys advocate for your clients in a courtroom, but talk about the relationship with the client beyond that. It's almost like a psychologist or counseling type relationship because a lot of times when the clients come to us, they haven't seen a therapist or counselor and they're going through one of, if not the worst experiences in their life. And sometimes what they need at the beginning is just someone to listen to them. That's what we do at Intake. We are there to listen and find out what's happened to them and then figure out the best way to marshal evidence to support their case and craft it into a compelling story for the judge and jury. Talk about a couple of the things that you've had the opportunity to pursue here and and some of the cases that you're really proud of and why. One of the cases I'm really proud of is actually a case out of South Florida, which 
was interesting because I hadn't been back to South Florida since I graduated from Miami Law School. It was a case involving a billionaire vulture capitalist who conned a family into a partnership with him, and then he took over the business, pushed them out, and took everything that they had worked so hard to build. And that was like something you would see on TV. I was just excited to be involved in that case. What What were the things that you brought to the table differently than somebody else would have? There were a lot of pre-trial issues in that case because obviously it was being defended by a very well-funded defense firm, and we just had to fight off motions at every turn. I mean, we had summary judgment motions. We had lots of motions to exclude evidence. The defense wanted to exclude almost everything that would show that the defendant had defrauded our clients. We are in front of a judge who was very sympathetic to the defense, and we're out-of-state attorneys. To be able to go down there as an outsider and win a $40 million judgment was one of the highlights of my career. What does something like that mean to the family on terms of resolution? Because I imagine that they're, one, looking for what they lost, but then the damage that that can cause you, because how long did that case take? It took years, at least five years. But the family was just so relieved to get vindicated by an impartial jury that they hadn't been making this up in their head all along. I mean, it, that it was real. What makes Chile Law Group the right fit for people that are evaluating situations like you? What is your competitive advantage? We like hard cases with difficult defendants and novel issues. And many boutique firms are not prepared to do that. We are ready to deal with everything from epidemiologists and statisticians to regular medical doctors or accident reconstructionists. And one of our fortes is making sure that the jury gets to hear the scientific evidence because there's a lot of push these days to keep science away from the juries. Why do you think that is? Because it's powerful. And a lot of parties think that if they can get an expert excluded, then the court will summarily rule in their favor. I would assume that as a small firm that is selective about the cases that they take, that makes you guys an extraordinary fit for clients that are really in the right and they know it and they're fine with taking three or four or five years to reach justice. And I imagine that's not everybody. Our representation is almost like bespoke. I mean, we do everything from the complaint is tailored to their story. We don't, I don't use any boilerplate. I start from scratch every time we'll use boilerplate in like a signature block. But I mean, (laughs) really... We're starting and we're writing the story from the beginning with the client and with an eye toward trial. Big firms don't have the time to do that. When you look, I know you prefer, I know all of you here, prefer a courtroom to just laying down and settling a case as athletes. But talk about being willing to walk into a courtroom, whereas a lot of other people are trying to make it a transactional business. Being able to walk into a courtroom gives you much more leverage because a lot of so-called trial lawyers don't actually want to try the case. The problem is things are relatively predictable in litigation leading up to trial. But because most cases don't go to trial, it's almost like the Wild West when you get in the courtroom and you just have, you can go in there with great plans and they'll almost be derailed immediately. It's just some you got to be ready to roll with the punches, change your game plan, move witnesses around, change exhibits. I liken it to like a, a ski race. I mean, you can plan to be the fastest, but once you start going, you got to make decisions on the fly and in a split second. And that's what we do well. And talk about the decision-making process that you guys undertake throughout every facet of somebody walking in here for the first time after you've agreed to meet with them, the infancy of a case and carrying it all the way through and the, and the personal adage and touch that you guys are willing to give to all the details. Well, one of the first things we look at is the potential client themselves. 
we're going to be going for bat, to bat for this person, and we want to know that they stand up. Yeah, that they. St- it's almost like an interview. We want to make sure that they are basically bulletproof, or the bad facts about them are easy to explain, or that we have an explanation for them. People with histories, they get injured too. And it doesn't mean that they aren't entitled to a recovery just because they've done something bad in the past. But that's often something that we have to deal with. When you look, I know you guys have between 40 and 50 active cases at any one time. Talk about why that makes you guys special, knowing that it can last for five years and that that is actually a super healthy number moving forward and the intention that that allows you to give to every individual one of those 45 clients? Well, for us, we've got about four lawyers right now. And I mean, 40 cases is 10 per lawyer. So that is a small enough number that we can get into the details, like deep into the details about every single case that we have. And if you're handling 40 cases per lawyer, once you start handling more and more cases, the work product you put out goes down proportionately. Well, Dre, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you if they have any questions? You can call me at 770-814-7001 or email me, Dre, D-R-E, at com. It's been another episode of Chile Law Review. We'll see you guys next week.